Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem is found in the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson eight of the physics one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Okay, so this problem is dealing with partial pressure. It gives us the mole fraction and it gives us the mass fraction. We've got to figure out how and if we're going to use those numbers to calculate the partial pressure. Now, just to a refresh on what partial pressure is, I've got a picture here of oxygen and nitrogen. Whole bunch of oxygen, whole bunch of nitrogen mixed up in this container, and we can measure the pressure in this container. It's 752 millimeters of mercury. What's interesting is this total pressure is actually, it's we can figure it out by adding the pressure that's created by the oxygen bouncing off the walls and the pressure created by just nitrogen. If we could separate those two, the pressures would add up and those pressures would give us the total pressure. The partial pressure of oxygen, the partial pressure of nitrogen are going to give us the total pressure. Here's the thing. We want to figure out what percentage of this total pressure belongs to oxygen and what percentage belongs to nitrogen, right? We don't have these numbers printed here. That would be nice. So we got to figure out how to calculate that. Well, we can do that because of the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law has taught us that the amount of pressure that a mole of gas exerts on a container, it doesn't depend on what kind of molecule we're dealing with. Meaning one mole of gas is always going to exert the same amount of pressure if it's under the same conditions. Doesn't matter whether it's a mole of oxygen or whether it's a mole of nitrogen, that doesn't change it. It's all about the number of particles that are bouncing around. So the mass of these different things actually doesn't matter. Because of that, we can calculate this just by going through, and we can calculate the partial pressure of oxygen just by figuring out the mole fraction of oxygen. In other words, all the moles in this container, what percentage of them or what fraction of them are oxygen as opposed to nitrogen. And if we multiply that by the total pressure, that will allow us to figure out what we're trying to figure out. Now let's get back to the question and let's see this in action. All right, remember what we talked about on that last slide. We can calculate this because of the ideal gas law. We can figure this out, the partial pressure of oxygen, by just multiplying the mole fraction of oxygen by the total pressure. And fortunately, we already have this in here, right? We've already got the total pressure. We don't need to worry about the mass fraction. That's what we figured out. So we just need the mole fraction. Now, if we take 0.5 as our mole fraction, we multiply that by 2.4, that's going to get us 1.2. If math is not your strong suit, if that's tricky, don't stress it. The MCAT's multiple choice. So we could have just round this down to two. 0.5 times two is one, and this is our closest answer option to one. Either way, A is gonna be the right answer. Let's check it out. Okay. Awesome. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your MCAT score. Look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time.